Cuban Olympic champion knocked him out. I've never been knocked out, but when a man's been knocked out, it's a sign that he can't be knocked out again. So I'm preparing for the distance of half to go. He's much younger, about 11 years younger. He's strong, he's heavy. And I'm preparing for a good fight where I will be able to keep moving if I have to because he's slow. Champ, a lot of people think talk about the things that you have going against you, your age. What have you got going for you? Mm, positive thinking. Uh, not allowing limitations to block me. See, we all live in our own world of limitations. And what keeps us from believing is that we can't see past these limitations. Some people see farther than others, such as myself. Uh, well, there's a limitation called old age. There's a limitation called gray hair. There's a limitation called too fat. There's a limitation called doubt. A limitation called doubt. I, I can't do it. I, I give up. And I want this fight to be a lesson to everybody out there with problems. Problems with loved ones, whether they want to kill themselves and give up. Problems because the king, education seems so tough to drop out of school. I'm dedicating this fight to all those who probably can't find employment and look for other means which may take them to jail. I advise you all to believe in yourselves, keep going, don't give up, don't let people see you. You see, a lot of people's mothers and fathers have told them they'll never be nothing. People listen to this interview now, and I know the mothers and fathers, you'll never be nothing. And a lot of them don't be nothing because they believe it. They're impressed by that limitation of doubt. So how I master all this stuff about old age and this and that is believe that I am the greatest, I'm still the greatest, and I can't lose. If Columbus didn't believe he would discover America, he wouldn't have got it. If we wouldn't be on the moon with America and then three astronauts didn't die on the ground trying, you got to have faith, and I have faith, and I know I can still do it. One more last thing before, before we complete this interview. Today is uh, the Irishman's Day, the day that uh, the Irish celebrate. And in particular, message to your Irish fans. Well, just welcome and wish them a happy, happy celebration. And I just be glad one day when the black people in America will have a good day they can celebrate. That's it. Yes, okay, now after this fight is over, then what? Uh, how long? Is it, what, what, are, what are your title plans? What are your well, plans? after this fight's over. I know I'm going to win by knockout. Ron, I don't know yet. Who's fighting this next fight? Tate. All right, then after Tate, then you got to get... After Tate. After Tate, I want the other pretender to Holmes. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 yes. He's the great pretender. Ooh. Maybe <laughs> you ought to go into singing any, anymore. Oh, yeah, I, want, I was going to tell you about that great movie you made. Uh, and TV movie made for Freedom TV. Roll, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Freedom Roll. You got any more plans for, for movies or anything like that? No, CT, I'm not a professional actor. I can get by, but I don't think I will mm -hmm. look. It was just like an experiment, mm -hmm. something I wanted to do. It's a good move. Been good.
Other side of Quadruple greatest. Quadruple is five, and quadruple is four. First, I get John Tate, then I bump off the pretender Larry Holmes. Want both of them? Ain't that dying? That scares my most faithful followers. All of them, Chum. Don't go back, Chum. Chum. Because man, you don't realize the my greatness. I'm still dancing. Did you see me? Still pretty. No shape. What you just saw John T. King do? Can't nobody do what I just did. 
We're weighing 240 pounds right now, coming in at 220. Fast, fast, living there. I'm so fast, I cut the light off, light off my bedroom. I hit the switch. I'm in the bed for the rooms, dog. <laughs> fast. <laughs> I'm bad. You know what I did getting ready for this fight? No, I know how I'm preparing specially. I tussled with an alligator, wrestled a whale, handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. <laughs> Check it out again. I wrestled the alligator last week. I tussled with a whale. I handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. You know what I did two months ago? Two months ago, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Is that too heavy for you? Got to hit again. One more time. Murdered a rock. I murdered a rock. I injured a stone. Hospitalize a brick. I'm so bad, I make medicine sick. Nothing like this. Never was and never will be. You look at the last. I was retired for a year and a half. I can't hear you. Did it drive? All right. I retired for a year and a half. Holmes hadn't proved to be worthy. Tate hadn't proved to be worthy. They can't talk. They can't write no poems. They can't do no shuffles. They can't write and do nothing. But both of them are ugly. I'm pretty. That's right. I'm pretty. Let me hear you. Am I pretty? Yeah! Can I pretty small time? Right. Yeah! What do you mean? No! All right. Allie. You heard it right here live in Living Call on the Hughes Rail Program. Allie! Allie! Yeah! Come on, come on, come on. With your my little boy, shake the hand and shake the world four times. This hand will shake the world four times. Shake the world four times. Shake the world. 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 to take Weaver to reunite the Crown B, both of those champs, and then retire. I'll see after the home fight. But I, I am, it is about time to quit. But I have just enough left to get by. What's the burning desire? Is it the people behind you? Is it your inner athletic drive that has carried you to such lofty heights over the years? The record, to make a record. Why does Evil Knievel look to jump over canyons on motorcycles? And now Evil Knievel's talking about getting an airplane 10,000 feet jumping out of no parachute and landing into haystack 10 miles high. That's dangerous. Why every little Olympics in Russia, everybody wants to break a record, to break a record, to make a record that never be broken. Four-time every champion, and I don't believe no man ever be five-time. Mm -hmm. So I'm close to it. And for me, to be four-time heavyweight champion of the world, that's what gives me a drive. How tough will this fight be? Sound like Cosell. How tough will this fight be? Um, It'll be as tough as I make it. If I don't train, 
come in too heavy. You know, there's nobody saying nothing about my weight. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about fat. It ain't a miracle. I was a fat man a few days ago. All of a sudden now, nobody talks about weight. I stopped to mess them all up, all the critics. Now I'm down to 227, which is fight weight when I was in my early 20s. Uh, this tough fight will not be tough. I, I promise this, I'll tell the people, let me tell them. This fight will be no problem. I promise you, I'm gonna walk through Holmes, make Holmes work, block his jab, counter punch, roll with his punches. I promise you, the fight will not go nine. The fight will be over, and when I finish the complete, he will not hit the bell for the ninth round. From anything from one to eight, the fight shall be over. I tell you now, from one to eight, it'll be over. Will anyone ever surpass this record, if it's to be, and I'm sure you think it will be, four-time heavyweight champion? Man, mind your lifetime. I can't see a man boxing one about 90, 80 or 90 years before a man won it twice. That was Floyd Patterson. And it was a year apart. He, Joe Hanson beat him. He beat the same man a year later. I beat Sonny Liston, 64. The baddest man around, another young bad man, Josh Holman, in 74, Spinks in 78, and now Norton in 80. If a man do it five times, I usually win the title about 24, 25 years old. I don't think, because when you get beat, usually the best man beat you, so you can't beat him again. So I don't think no man will get beat four times and come back and win five times. I don't believe we'll ever see that. Finally, we've enjoyed your career for 20-some years, and in the final question, Holmes said you're making a date your body can't keep. How do you react to that? He's supposed to talk. He's proud. He's a champion. He can't act fearful. But now he's worried to death. Mm. Scared to death. They told him I'm skinny. I was a big fat man with double chins, big jaws, big belly. Ran 253. And it was a joke. You coming back? Big cartoons of paper. All of a sudden now, I'm just look at me. I'm pretty and trim. My old butt. And I got all the, guess what? I got five weeks to go. I'm going to come in tight and better yet. Oh, it's going to be a shock. He's got to talk like that. But he knows. He knows. He's praying that I ain't the same Ali. He's praying that I ain't as good as I look. He just don't know what to do. Have any poem for him? Holmes, I have a lot of speed and a lot of endurance. Go get some more insurance. Well, there it is. 90 minutes. A look back at one of the greatest careers in the history of sports the world. Also today, I'll be talking from London via the satellite with that man, Muhammad Ali, three-time heavyweight champion, and also with the reigning WBC heavyweight champion, Larry Holmes, about their upcoming fight. Top billing for his title fight with Muhammad Ali on Thursday, and in Las Vegas, top billing means you get top dollar and top recognition. But that's not the case with Larry Holmes. Muhammad Ali is making more money than Larry Holmes, and he's definitely getting much more recognition. That riles the heavyweight champion of the world. Ali's going to get knocked out in front of millions of people. He's going home a loser. I'm going to shed his mind. Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada, in recent years, the boxing capital of the world. The sports pavilion right there, the scene set for dozens of title fights. But come Thursday night, that arena right there now being built. The scene set for the return to the ring of one of the most extraordinary figures of our time, Muhammad Ali. It's hard to believe as one looks back that the career began 25 years ago at age 13. Indeed, it's been two solid decades since Ali dazzled the crowds in Rome, winning the gold medal in the light heavyweight classification in the Olympics. And indeed, it's been, well, 16 long years since he startled the world with the upset of the man he called the big, ugly bear, Charles Sonny Liston. Then, after doing away with Liston, there were others, especially this one, his absolute peak against Cleveland Williams in Houston, Texas. The dazzling speed of hands and feet, the telling features. And most notable fights of all, the three against Joe Frazier, Smoke and Joe, the greatest one of all, this one, the thriller in Manila. 14th round action, Ali coming back. 
and so beating up Frazier that Frazier couldn't come out for the 15th. But look at Ali. In a state of exhaustion, maybe he realized he would never be the great fighter again. And he certainly wasn't first time around in 78 against Leon Spinks, a virtual amateur. But he took Ali apart. Everyone figured it was over. But it wasn't. Because September 15th, 1978, it was Ali who destroyed Spinks. He became the first three-time heavyweight champ in history of fitting end to a remarkable career. A few months later, Muhammad Ali officially retired. When he did get in a ring for an exhibition, his physical condition was pathetic. Surely it was over. But it wasn't. He's back at age 38. Two years since his last fight, Ali will take on his heir apparent, Larry Holmes. He's hardly the first ex-world champion to be lured back to the ring by dreams of money and glory. Remember James J. Jeffries? It was July 4th, 1910. He came out of retirement after six years away. The great white hope against Jack Johnson. The great white hope was humiliated by Johnson. And then the very great Sugar Ray Robinson. He retired at 32, came back two years later, fought till he was 45. This was the end against Joey Archer, knocked down and beaten. And then that sad night in 51, Joe Lewis at 37 against Rocky Marciano. And Marciano knocked him senseless and cried after the fight. He had had to destroy his idol. When Muhammad Ali retired, he said he didn't want to repeat the mistakes of the great fighters of the past. He would retire as champion, but now he's back in the ring, trying to turn back the clock, trying to recapture the skills that made him so great. Despite an exhaustive Mayo Clinic examination, even his wife doesn't want him to come back. There she is with their child. His gym workouts have not given evidence that he can be competitive. In the gymnasium, he takes shots, which are unnecessary. But in a fight, it's a different ball game. I think Muhammad's sky high for this fight. I also think that Muhammad's gotten to Larry. I think Larry right now is trying to be Muhammad. And you can't pull Muhammad Ali's boots. You got to be uh, what you are, Larry Holmes. Because there'll never be another Muhammad Ali. There are those who agree that Ali has gotten to Holmes. They admit that Muhammad can no longer match Larry in pure physical skills. But they say that the former champion will outthink his former sparring partner, pull off another upset as he did in Zaire against George Foreman. Holmes insists he is not intimidated by Ali. He appears outwardly confident, but inside there is frustration. Larry sees a lack of respect for his talent and a lack of acceptance for him as champion. Sometimes he takes that frustration out on his sparring partners, as you see there, as he prepares for Thursday's bout. He has been fighting flat-footed, determined to do to his own idol what Marciano did to Lewis 29 years ago. Knock him out if he's successful. He will win his 36th consecutive fight, tie the heavyweight record for consecutive title defense knockouts. Whether he will win the public acceptance he wants is a question only time can answer. If Ali is successful, he will become the four-time heavyweight champion of the world. We'll be back in a moment to talk to Ali about Thursday's title fight. ...to take a workout, but has agreed to speak with us right here and now via the satellite. Question one, Muhammad. A year ago, June, we did a farewell show together on Wide World of Sports. You said then, flatly, I'm finished, this is it. I'm not going to go out the way Joe Lewis and some others have done. I'm going out on top. Why come back now? What's the inner reason? Well, at the time, Howard, I told you I wasn't going to come back. I was serious at that moment. Just like many times I've been married two times, I promised never to leave my wife and to death to his part. I change. We have more divorces. We always change our mind. So I change my mind. I'm back for the fourth time. Boxing has never produced a man great enough to fight for four times. And history will probably never produce another man who can fight for the title four times. So it's something I gotta do. And I'm coming back because I'm gonna be the champ four times. I promise you, it'll be a miracle. And Holmes will be no contests. All right. There will be no contests. Muhammad, you will probably go into the ring, if I can take your word for it, at about 220 pounds. You've lost an enormous amount of weight. Have you lost your strength with it? 
that would be being true. That would be a true statement, Howard, if I did it in one or two months. But I've been working six and one half months of this fight. Even before the fight was announced, I felt it would come off. I was training. I've been working gravity for six months. I'm in top shape. I'm down faster than ever. I'm equivalent to the same fight with Manila with Joe Frazier. I'll come in with about 225. I'll gain a few more pounds resting and gaining strength so I can and burn energy. Promise you, no, I wouldn't come back if I thought I'd go out a loser. I know I can whoop Holmes. All right. Accepting that from you. In the meantime, you've been fighting lighter weight fighters in your sparring sessions. You've been taking a lot of punches. Is that what you plan to do? Let Larry Holmes punch himself out against you? Not that. I can't afford that because I did that with Sphinx and lost too many rounds the first fight and couldn't catch up. My thing now, if I should get hit, I'd be ready to take it. But I'm working with Charles Carter, who's the alternate Olympic champion, won President Carter's Olympics. He's United States champion, same height as Holmes, six feet two, 160 pounds, and super fast. I can get away from his punches and hit him before he get away. So I'm ready for sharp-wise. That's why I have him to keep me sharp. Final question, champ. Will you decision him or will you knock him out? Knock out. Between one and nine, his behind should be mine and nine. To show you how great I am, to show the world how super I am, I'm off two years, 253 pounds when I came back, and here's a man undefeated, seven straight knockouts, and I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I want all of you to know right now, his behind shall be mine in round nine. His behind Thank shall be mine in nine. It will not go nine. You've taken us back a lot yeah. of years with yeah. predictions. Mm. All right, Muhammad. Mm. Thanks a million. Go to your workout. Good luck to you. I'll see you next week. Now let's turn our attention to Larry Holmes, the unbeaten WBC World Heavyweight Champion. Larry Ali just told me that you'll go between the first and the ninth round. What's your rejoinder? Well, first of all, Howard, I thought that that's when he'll go. I don't feel the man can fight nine rounds anymore, Howard. The man never fought in nine rounds and since uh, the last Joe Frazier in Manila. And he haven't knocked nobody out since 1976. And how are you going to knock me out when I've been hit by the hardest punchers in the world of boxing today? Ernie Shavers floored me and got up and whooped him and stopped him. Mike Weaver had me in trouble when I was sick, when I had, wasn't feeling right, and I knocked him out in the 12th round. What gives this man to never knock nobody out the idea that he can knock me out in nine rounds when he's going to have to fight from bell one to whatever round he ends. You've never had the recognition you think you deserve. Is that why this is the most important fight of your life, to get yes, that Howard. recognition? Howard, I think so. I feel that this is taking the monkey off my back. And still in all, now by me fighting Muhammad Ali, now I still am not getting to just use my recognition. I see ABC puts up Ali Holmes, which it should be Holmes Ali. And uh, I feel that now after I knock out this guy, I think my just dues will come. So we'll let the critics to, uh, say what they want and think what we want. We go out in the ring on the October the 2nd. We do our thing. We knock Ali out. And we go home and spend time with my family. Final question. Quick answer, if you will. Ali has been your idol. Will you take it easy on him for that reason? The question is, uh, Howard, will he take it easy on me? No, he will not take it easy on me, therefore I can't take it easy on him. My, my thing is to go out there and knock him out, to hurt this man, to get him out of there as quick as possible. Not to take it easy on him, that is not my job. They're paying me to knock him out, to get the monkey off my back, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. The man is in serious trouble. He's made okay. a mistake. He's made a Larry, mistake, Howard. Good luck to you. Thank you, old buddy. He made a mistake now. I'm the baddest. They can't whoop me. We are back live. It is nighttime now in Las Vegas, a city perpetually alive with neon glitter. And in less than 24 hours, the scene of the heavyweight championship fight between Holmes and Ali. Standing by now in his hotel suite in Las Vegas is the challenger. Not a word that's used very often about your champ, uh, and I prefer to re refer to you as the champ, if I may. You must know that there's got to be a special place in the heart of every middle-aged man, not only in America, but all over the world, for you tomorrow. 
plugging, I suppose, in the corner of their heart for you. Let me ask you this question to begin with. How'd you lose all that weight? Well, I got determined. I didn't rush it. It took me six months watching sweets, watching my food, not drinking sodas and ice cream and candy and all the junk foods, and being determined to win my title four times and promise you, knock Holmes out. Regardless of all the talk about old man, too old, inactive, I promise you, tell the whole world, watch it real close, go to your closed circuit outlets, I promise you, I'll destroy Holmes. Now, before you psych yourself up into that again, let me ask you about why you do it. I mean, $8 million ain't a bad reason for doing anything, but, but why, do you, why do you come back at, at age 38 and put yourself through all that torture? Well, I tell you, it wasn't no torture. So I'm a Muslim, been a Muslim, not eating pork and drinking beer and whiskey and wine and eating collard greens and sweet potatoes and lime beans and cornbread, eating the right foods. We should live to be at least 110. Man shouldn't come out at 30 and die at 45 years old. We Americans don't live right. I'm coming back because it's there. Why are we going to the moon? Because it's there. Why are we going to Mars? Because it's there. I'm no heavyweight in history has ever had the chance to go four times, and history will probably never produce another man who can fight for four times. It's something I gotta do. If I don't do it, it'll bore me all life. Plus, I can whoop Holmes. I know Holmes. Holmes look great to you. He look great to ordinary fans. He looks rough, but I'm a boxer. He don't look like nothing to me. I want Holmes because he's there. I want the four-time title because I'll be the greatest athlete in the history of all sports. A title, that they say records are made to be broken, but I have a record that can be broken. Mohammed, you're an extraordinary human being. You've demonstrated that in a variety of ways over the years, but I just wonder to what extent boxing owns you. I don't mean in the, in the traditional sense of owning you, that they've bought you, but can you leave it behind? You've got so many people who depend on you. We just saw a little of that in the piece that Charlie Gibson did. And well, I have to leave boxing behind one day. I'm not at the age where I have to quit yet, but I know I have to go one day, and I will go and do other things, many more things I'm going to do. But my main goal is to be an Islamic evangelist. That's all I'm going to do is spread the Islamic faith throughout the world. Well, now, why you? Why is it necessary that you, that you be the, the, the preacher of the Islamic gospel? I says I would like to be a... Could you repeat that question? Yeah, I say, why, why you? Why do you have to be the preacher of the Islamic gospel? Why I didn't do you say think be you a preacher. Were... We have many ministers. I want to be an evangelist, a spreader, one of many. Like Billy Graham, we got Rex Humber, Oral Roberts, Rev Mike, all type of ministers throughout the world, but they have the Christian faith. So Islamic religion has many ministers and evangelists too, and I want to be one of them. I, ain't, I won't be the one. And how will you do that? Here in the United States, or will you go all around the Wherever world? Wherever I'm asked, except to Wallace D. Muhammad, the leader of the Muslim, the successor to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's up to him. Whatever he says, what I'll do. If it wasn't for the Muslim religion, I wouldn't be so great. I wouldn't be the world known I am. I wouldn't be so successful. I wouldn't have the great name Muhammad Ali, which has opened doors throughout the world. If it wasn't for the Islamic religion, I'd be in bad shape sometimes eating pork chops. Did you consult with him about this fight? Who? The, Who? uh... It wasn't Elijah Muhammad you were talking no, about. No, uh, Wallace D. Muhammad. Wallace no. D. Muhammad. Yeah. He's a spiritual man. And boxing is my living. He knows I'm a boxer and a Muslim. Like many people, uh, boxing, they're Christians and other religions. But I don't consult with him over sports because he's not into sports. He's okay. a spiritual leader. He's seeing it from a different point of view now. We can hear you. Okay, and Muhammad Ali, you can hear us too. Yes, I hear as good as Larry. I beg your pardon? I hear as good as Larry. Oh. <laughs> How encouraging. Uh, Larry Holmes, uh, there was a story about you in the papers here in New York yesterday that said you were getting angry with this being called the Ali Holmes fight, that you felt since you were the champ, you ought to receive top billing. Does it really make any difference who gets top billing in this fight? Well, no, not really, because Ali is such a legend, and uh, people know him all the way around the world, and I feel that the people should get the chance to meet Larry Holmes. Uh, I feel that I'm giving him all the money, I'm giving him all the people. I think at least I should do is get the top billing, but I feel that the people will give me my just dues after I fight Ali, after I beat Ali, and I think all my just dues will come. Larry, could you relate the story of walking into Muhammad Ali's training camp some years ago and becoming his sparring partner? How did that happen? Well, some nine years ago, I walked into Ali's training camp back in Deer Lake before he even had uh, his castle on the hill, I would say. He had a little cradle in the uh, Pollock Mink Farm. Uh, Ernie Butler met Angelo Dundee at the time. Ernie Butler was my manager. Ali wanted to put on an exhibition in Reading, Pennsylvania. And uh, I, th I thought 
Angelo took a liking into me with Ali, and we put on an exhibition. Since then, I think we uh, had grown together. We uh, communi to get communicated together, and uh, I gr I grown a great deal of respect for Ali, and I feel that he grown a great deal of respect for me. Will there be any unusual feelings in your mind when you enter the ring on Thursday night to fight this oh, man? No way. Uh, you know, we have to leave our friendship on the, on the ring post as we get inside the ring. This is business. This is hard, rough, top business. This is no game. Uh, kids that should not play in this game because it's very dangerous. But Ali and I will go at it, you know, like we don't know each other, like we never met each other, and try to take each other's head off. All right, let me ask uh, Muhammad Ali a couple of things. Why do we only have one microphone out there, Muhammad? Does anybody know? <laughs> I love Vegas, I'm out of style, but the equipment is so cheap, don't call for a while. <laughs> You've been asked this before, but I haven't asked you, so I'm going to try it. You are uh, three times the uh, heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, you have received every accolade that your sport can bestow. You are a hero in every nation on this planet. Why go in and take another chance at a possibly a defeat? when you have already accomplished all that one man can accomplish in the sport of boxing? Well, the reason I'm coming back, that's a good question, for the fourth time. No man has ever been great enough to fight for four times because they never could win it three times. And history will probably never produce another man who will be able to go four times. Why are we going to the moon? Why did we go to the moon? Because of there. Now, why are we going to Mars? Next, next we'll be going to Jupiter because of there. He who is not courageous enough to, enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. I know it's a risk, but I know I can beat Holmes. I watched all the Holmes fights. I watched him in training. I can beat him. I can beat him. I promise. This will be no contest. I will jab him, hook him, right cross him, dance, I'll point him. He won't win a round. I promise you. I will show you why I'm truly the greatest of all times. Two years out of inactivity. 38 years old, was up to 253 pounds. They said I couldn't lose some weight. I'm down to 217 now. That's the first miracle. All I say is watch me destroy. Thank you very much, Christopher. And we're going to turn our attention to Larry Holmes against Muhammad Ali in just a moment. Right now, these words. The WBC World Heavyweight Championship, Larry Holmes versus Muhammad Ali, is brought to you by... Pontiac. As quickly as possible, we're going to turn our attention to the fight held October 2nd pass between Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali. Both fighters are here, will be talking with me after you view the contest, as I call that contest that night. But to give you some of the pre-fight flavor, I spoke before the fight with both fighters. Larry alleged that uh, Muhammad was using a hypnotist. Muhammad denied it. And thus, we pick up at that point in the conversation with me talking first to Larry Holmes. And you're convinced that despite his denials, he is seeing a hypnotist. I think so, Howard. I think so. Uh, he lost a great deal of weight. Uh, I don't feel that he lost this amount of weight because he's been training so hard. I think it's because he's having been eating. I think I got him so that he can't eat. He will be weak on the night of the fight. I will go to him. I will make this man fight every second, every, every round, and I don't think he can go eight rounds. That's why I'm predicting that I will knock Ali out. I will stop him somewhere from one to eight rounds. few quick questions that we have to consider before this fight. How is it possible you haven't fought for more than two years to have your reflexes and your skills the way once they were. Charles Carter, my sparring partner, 22 years old, 160 pounds, same height homes, I'm faster. Um, Jeff Stedemar, top notch man, 22 years old, 6'2", I'm faster. My, Marty Monroe, world 8th rank heavyweight, 24 years old, I'm faster. You watch, that's why I say, you see a miracle. I've had two year rest, two years off, I was just right. Two years off, take what you say, and I'm going to whoop home. But I can understand your resolve, but what about your resiliency? Your muscle tone, losing all that Muscle weight. tone, perfect. Look. Haven't you lost some strength? No, I'm not. If I did it in two months, I'd be how? I've been working six months. I did graduate. I've done today 15,640 calisthenics. Oh, man, I'm ready. I wouldn't come back and go out a loser. Isn't this difficult for you? Many times you've expressed your respect for the man, even admiration. 
Once he was your idol. How can you hate him now? No, Howard, I don't hate him. I, I feel that I cannot hate anyone, but I feel that I have to get my just due. I have to get the monkey off my back. This shadow has been following me around for many years. I haven't really got my just dues. Everywhere I go, people say, Ali, what about Ali? What about Ali? What about Ali? I have to knock this man out for the people who say, well, he knocked the man out, but they're going to say he was old. So what? I'd rather them say he was old than say I was nothing. Isn't that saying to me, in a diffused kind of way, that you can't get the recognition you think you deserve, even if you win? Right, Howard. I don't feel that I'll ever get the recognition I deserve. Even if I win, if I break all kinds of records or whatever, I feel that the monkey is always going to be on my back. But we don't care about that. As long as we're happy and we be able to live with ourselves, I think we'll be happy with that. And I'm happy with myself now. I'm married. I got my kids. And that's all that matters to me. Here's my hand. Should be mine by round nine. Did you hear me? By round nine, it'll be all over. Play this stuff, just in case. You think I can't do it? Use this tape. I will destroy homes. And I want you to play this thing over to the public and make me like a fool. It's behind, she's mad and that. I cannot lose the homes. I cannot lose the homes. Now play it the next day. There he is, the returning hero. Maybe not this time the conquering hero, Muhammad Ali, the man who hasn't had a good fight for the last five years, not since Manila. The man who hasn't even fought since September 15, 1978. He is 38 years of age now, and he must undertake the task of reproving himself all over again. The man who has held the title an unprecedented three times and seeks to make it a fourth. Incredible. He has taken off more than 50 pounds in the last six months. How much strength can he have left? What will his tactics be? What will his weapon be? Nobody really knows. He has been obsessed with the desire to establish that Larry Holmes is afraid of him, as Holmes has been obsessed with the desire to establish that Ali is afraid of him. He is only 217 and a half, the lowest weight he's been since Kinshasa Zaire, when he weighed 216 and a half and rope-a-doped Foreman into extinction. Muhammad Ali, now in the ring, awaiting the arrival of Larry Holmes. Here's Larry Holmes, the man who thirsts for recognition, who has pointedly said, even if I win, even if I knock him out, they'll say I knocked out an old man. Larry Holmes, who's used an old tactic, a one-time Ali tactic. At one point in Muhammad's career, he kept Muhammad waiting in the ring. Let him sweat some more. Let him think some more. Maybe worry some more. But here comes Larry Holmes, the WBC heavyweight champion, a man who deserves recognition as a solid fighter, the possessor of a fine left jab and a good enough right, unbeaten in 35 bouts, 26 KOs, 211 and a half his weight, his height 6'4", his reach 79 inches, three inches less than Ali's, who is six feet three inches tall. So Larry Holmes, on this day, can spring from anonymity. And yet, oddly, the whole atmosphere in Las Vegas has been one of people coming from all over the country, hoping that somehow Muhammad Ali as you look at Larry Holmes, can draw upon some inexhaustible resource. There he is. He is scaled down so he looks positively thin, at least in the face. There is the championship belt, which Holmes now owns. There's been a lot of talk about Ali using a hypnotist named Jimmy Grippa. Ali poo-poos it. There is Ali, much the way he looked in Kinshasa. Saw ear as they screamed, Ali Bumaye, Ali Bumaye. He is back in the ring. Whether he comes back as Muhammad Ali or merely a vague shell, a replica of what once he was, remains to be seen. That's the uncertainty in this bout. Talking to Larry Holmes now, 
as they are putting on Larry's gloves, the familiar figure of yesteryear, Drew Brown Bundini, will be back with the start of the WBC. Ali still trying to psych Larry Holmes, posturing, making faces at him, holding up four fingers and five fingers. He has said Holmes will be his within nine. Holmes being taunted by the familiar figure of the past, Drew Brown Bundini. Holmes has said he will go right at Ali. Ali has said, I only hope so. I only hope so. Fight will be scored on the 10-point must system. Three knockdown rule wave, mandatory eight count, no standing eight counts. Once they had that in Nevada, no saving by the bell, except in the final round, the referee does not score. The referee is a man named Richard Green. He is a veteran referee. I last worked a fight of his here in Las Vegas when Wilfredo Gomez had to go 10 rounds against the veteran Carlos Mendoza. Look at Ali and Larry Holmes. I respect Larry Holmes. I respect him as a fighter. I respect him as a man. As for Ali, his lifetime speaks for itself. During the turbulence of the 60s, the young people adopted him as an anti-hero. In the 70s, he actually became an establishment hero. And he has proved himself transcendental to the sport of which he has been a part, a figure in constitutional law history. We are about ready to go. This is the main event of the evening. 15 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, the challenger, the three-time Heavyweight Champion of the World, fighting out of Louisville, Kentucky, weighing 217 and one-half pounds. Introducing, Muhammad Ali. Crowd stands as one for Muhammad Ali, Angelo Dundee, another familiar figure in Ali's and corner. In the red corner. Here's Holmes. Fighting out of Eastern Pennsylvania. He is going for a record, eight straight KO in the heavyweight title defense. He weighs 211 and one half pounds. He is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Larry. The Eastern Assassin, Paul. 15 rounds of boxing. spoke for itself. Ali trying the psych Holmes to the very advent of the bout itself. How much he succeeded, how much it will be forgotten once the action starts remains to be seen. Rich Giacchetti, the manager of Holmes in the corner. It's a 20-foot ring, big ring. Favors a boxer who can move. Once Ali was unsurpassed in that regard. Ali carrying on with the referee, Richard Green. Green having trouble getting the fight started. The bell for round one. 
wide-eyed, posturing Ali. Holmes, purposeful. Holmes really would like to make mincemeat of him early, if he can. 25 seconds into round one. Ali retains one splendid weapon, always his best weapon, the straight right. You see him covering there, peekaboo fashion. If Larry gets lazy with his left jab, which he's been known to do, he can become Ali's accomplice. Uh, Larry is not the wise ringmaster that Ali used to be. And a straight right could jar Holmes. That's what Ali has to hope for. Holmes does not intend to let the left jab get lazy tonight. First round action, a minute 20 seconds. Remember this about Ali, there has never, not ever been a man who can take a punch better than Ali. Holmes will work down to that midriff, trusting that the loss of flesh has left flab in that. Now remember, we are fighting in what has been an oppressive heat. That may be a major factor. It was 100 degrees today. It may be close to that under these lights tonight. We are into the final minute of round one. Ali, 56 victories, three defeats, 37 KOs. Thirty-five seconds left in the round. Round one. Ali. You saw him motion Holmes to come on. Ali will seek to use his upper body to maul and brawl Holmes the way he did Leon Spinks. But Holmes is a far better fighter than Leon Spinks. Holmes' task is not to lose his head, not to be outsmarted. We're approaching the end of round one. The bell for round two. Ali to the left, Holmes to the right. Holmes quickly using that swift left jab. It is not a weak jab, it is a jarring jab, stinging. And notice how frequently he will seek to go to the midsection, testing what he feels must be flab left by the tremendous weight loss. Third man in the ring is Richard Green. Ali has said he doesn't want to go out the way Joe Lewis did and others have. Jim Jeffries tried to come back after being away for years against Jack Johnson. He was demolished. Good right to the belly by Holmes. A minute into the round. The left jab sticking by Holmes. Ali posturing and talking, but not punching. Not at the moment. The crowd chants, you hear them, Ali. Minute and a half into the round. Ali looking, looking, waiting to get the right in. Larry's hand, left hand down, perhaps a touch too far. Watch that Larry Holmes left hand. Now he got it back up to throw it. Doubled and tripled on it. Scored only twice.
into the final minute of round two. So far, Ali doing little, if any. Thirty seconds left in round two. Holmes being careful, an occasional flurry like that. Test out Ali. Final seconds of round two. Holmes is round. We're about ready for round three. There's the bell. At ringside, it is 86 degrees in the ring under the lights. A lot more than that. With Ali, you must constantly look for strategy, trying to outsmart the opponent, beat him with the mind, and then ultimately with the fists. So you wonder, is he figuring that the heat, together with Holmes' frequency of jabs, will wear down Larry and then give him, Ali, the opportunity to use the right? Or is Ali just fighting physiological laws that can't be overcome? A good, quick right by Holmes. 50 seconds into round three. Holmes continuing to use that jab. Ali kept at bay. A good combination by Holmes. He is younger by seven years. He is now much faster than the fastest heavyweight who has yet lived. Holmes, as you can readily see, doing all the scoring. Quick left to the face, then down to the midriff. A minute 35 into round three. Again, a good combination. And a little bit of hurt appeared in Ali's eyes, but Ali continues to talk to Holmes. into the final minute of round three. Holmes is aware of Ali's right, knows that what is left is in that, that hand. Thirty seconds left. Ali continues to talk, muttering to Holmes, challenging him verbally. The verbal truculence does not equal the fistic truculence. Almost ready for round four. Larry Holmes has won the first three rounds quite clearly, quite cleanly. Ali has thrown one right in the first round that did score. That's been about the size of it. The rest has been talking to Holmes. Holmes has been fighting behind his left jab. Occasionally, he's thrown rights in combination particularly good combination by Holmes in the second round. Forty-five seconds into round four, and Holmes continues to use the jab. Got a good one in to the belly. Good 
And the belly and up to the head and the double to the head and back to the belly. He's diversifying his jab very effectively. In the meantime, Ali having trouble. Having trouble even getting to Holmes. Because Holmes is left is so keeping him at bay. Right there and again. But Holmes will be wary. No matter what he wants in the way of recognition, he doesn't want to make a mistake. Too much latent respect for the ability that used to be there to risk finding out what, if anything, is left. Crowd roared as Ali suddenly sought to move in with a right. Seems to me there is a swelling to Ali's face, and most particularly under the left eye. There is no sign of blood. Forty seconds left. Round four. So far. Holmes having a cautious cakewalk. Again, to the belly, after to the head. And again, there's the occasional right. Then the left. Ali in the corner. Crowd roars every time Ali flicks. You can hear referee Green in the background cautioning Ali about holding on to the rope with one hand flicking with the other. Bell for round five. Let's see if Ali can begin to put some punches together. Now you see him moving, using the ring. First time he's done that. Now let's see how Holmes handles this. Fifth round action. The right lead by Holmes. Notice how Holmes is varying location on his jabs. In that pattern of to the face, to the belly, back up, back down. Minute 10 seconds gone in round five. How much of this can Ali do in this heat after all these years? And he is not scoring points while he does it. That was a good flicking left jab. Two quick lefts to the belly by Holmes, then up to the face. Not scoring well with the one to the face, but the, again, belly and head. Again, the face. Holmes posturing for Ali now. Ali talking back. But they fight with blows, not with chatter. Constant rain of talk from Ali, but the lefts keep coming into his face. Well, you saw Ali shimmy like his sister Kate. Holmes had done it earlier. 25 seconds left in round five. Oh, a good, sharp left jab by Holmes. You see him doubling and tripling. So far, it is utterly no contest.
We're back in Las Vegas, Nevada. Angie Dundee working over the damaged eye of Ali. Her Dundee say you've got to start firing to Ali. Dundee just asked Ali if he was all right. Ali said yes. This fight for the WBC World Heavyweight Championship, that was the bell for round six. There is a little red welt under Ali's left eye. It has been, up to this point, no contest. And you see more of those lefts going in. Scoring steadily against Muhammad Ali. And I repeat, Holmes has had excellent location with his jab. This is sixth round action. And in the last 30 seconds, Ali is doing better with his jab, getting to Holmes' belly, than he has done in the prior five rounds. But Holmes now comes back. Ali against the ropes. He was warned, you'll remember, in round four about holding on to the ropes and hitting at the same time by referee Richard Green. There was the right of Holmes, and it jarred Ali. Rich Giacchetti in the corner yelling, dig into him. That's it, Giacchetti said. We're almost two minutes into round six. Ali, not winning this round in my opinion, but making better use of his left jab than he has in the fight until now. Chiquetti yelling, that's it, up and down. With the jab, he means. And Ali, too, saying the same thing. I don't know how that serves Muhammad, but it's all right with him. It's all right with me. Set him up nice. That's it. That's it. Hit it again. Set him up with the jab again. That's it. Get it up there, Ali is telling him. Get it up there. Hit me harder, Ali said. And so Holmes did. from the roof of Caesar's Palace, the ring behind it, where Holmes is defending his WBC heavyweight crown against Ali. All right, round seven. And no question, Ali's left eye has tightened. It is smaller, and it is swollen. The Holmes jabs have taken their toll, and Holmes may be ready to seek to unload a little more loosely than he has been. He has been, as I said, enjoying a cautious cakewalk. Now Ali, or rather Holmes, answering Ali in a way sneeringly with his shimmy. Last time Holmes did that shimmy, he purposefully walked Ali to the center of the ring where Ali said he wanted to meet him. Ali dancing on his toes now. Seventh round. 
Ali got in a couple of good jabs. I mentioned that in the sixth round, he began to get his jab working to some degree. And he's working it better now. And the crowd is responding. A minute and a half into round seven. Ali getting in and out in a hurry with the jab. Now against the ropes, covering up as Holmes tries to get at him. Apart from the one caution about holding the rope, referee Green has had an easy time of it. Forty-five seconds left in round seven and counting down. Not a great round, but Ali's best round up till now. See that? Ali doubled on the left successfully, and Holmes was angered. Ali covering, and yet two of the lefts got in, and Holmes getting angry, went at the belly with the right. Oh, a good left and a right that sent Ali back against the ropes. Ali quickly covering, and even... Well, there he is. Angie Dundee talking to him. Ali's best round was that round, the seventh round, and yet it's hard to score it for him the way Holmes ended the round. Previous six rounds, Holmes was doing what he wanted. Ali's left eye grows smaller. I don't know what words of counsel he could get from Drew Brown Bundini. Now, you can see the discoloration under Ali's left eye. Bundini talking to Ali. Bundini may be more famous for some of the limericks he's contributed to Ali. Bet on Sonny and lose your money. But that was 1964. This is the eighth round and quickly Holmes scored with a left to Ali's chin and then another. What was it Ali said? Holmes will be mine in nine. Well, we're getting close. Again the left, and again. Veronica, Ali's wife, watching. She didn't want him to fight. He paid no heed. This is the eighth round, scheduled 15 rounds. Holmes has been systematic from the very first bell. This round, Ali, as Holmes tries to get through that peekaboo guard of Ali's, this round, Ali has not been flicking the left the way he did in round seven. He has virtually not thrown a successful punch. Ali, the look of a terribly fatigued old fighter. The right eye now getting discolored, as well as the left. Oh, 
Ali may be hurt. He may be pretending, but he may be hurt. Twenty-five seconds left in round eight. And Holmes continues. Systematic, metho methodical, purposeful. Larry Holmes having a field day. Ali gets wearily to his feet as we prepare for round nine. There is a flow of blood under the left eye. It is sad to see this as the left working away, working away of Larry Holmes. Calling the splendor of the man, speed of hands and feet, the way it was in 66. Oh, that right hurt Ali when he demolished Cleveland Williams at his pos positive peak and at 67 when he gave it oh he's he's ready to go this must be stopped it is a sad way to end well they will not stop it what's my name he said to Ernie Terrell as he clobbered him Terrell a tough fight at a beat he was kind to Zora Foley. All those fights. And now this. This is the ninth round. The very round that Ali had said would certainly be the end. He'll be mine in nine. Crowd screaming, chanting, Ali, Ali. Legends die hard. And Ali is learning that even he cannot be forever young. His hands are no longer busy, his feet no longer swift. Thirty-five seconds left in round nine. It appeared it might be stopped within the first minute. But referee Green elected not to. Oh, he is taking a pounding. Has Holmes now realizing that Ali can no longer hurt him. He's letting go. So we have been through nine rounds and Ali sits in his corner and one thinks about the man's pride and his self-respect. Are you all right? Are you all right? Dundee asking Ali. Dundee, who cares about the man together so long, who cares about Ali's pride and self respect. It must be killing him to see this happen to Ali. Here was the corner action. Ali gets to his feet ever so slowly for the 10th round. His left eye is all but closed. His right eye has narrowed. Yeah. 
He was flawed once by a fighter named Banks. He was flawed once by Henry Cooper, the test tube bleeder in Wembley in London. And he was, of course, flawed on March 8, 1971 by Joe Frazier. The Ali Frazier fight one in Madison Square Garden in New York. This is the 10th round. Come on, that's it. Dig in, dig in. Bring it up, Big Jack. That's it. Go in. Stay on. Stay on. A minute gone. Right back. That's it. Right in. Right in. Holmes's corner keeps telling him to use the right hand to punish Ali. There was the right into the midsection. Home scoring at virtual will. Sad to witness this, isn't it? A minute. Counting down. Round 10. I realize the legend that this man has been. I would hope they would stop this fight. 30 seconds left. Savage. This fight should be stopped. Angelo is telling the referee to stop it. Mundini is arguing with him. Check him out. What do you want to do? The game's over. I'm the chief second. All right. I stopped the fight. All right. He would not. He would not give in, Angelo Dundee. He cared about his fighter too much, the way Eddie Futch cared about Joe Frazier too much in 1975 in Manila to let him come out. It is a sad way to see this great man's career end, but it seemed inevitable. I talked about the laws of physiology. So now the scene in ring center, and Larry Holmes is the heavyweight champion of the world. He didn't fight spectacularly, he didn't know what Ali had left, if anything. He fought carefully, and he fought wisely, and he fought well. For Muhammad, he must face the final curtain. Exactly what happened in the corner when you said you wanted to end it? Well, I had told Muhammad a few rounds before that if he start, don't start doing something, I'm going to definitely stop the fight. I said, I'll give you one more shot at it. See what you can get off, see if you can put this guy, because if you're not going to do nothing, the guy's going to keep on whacking on you. So when he came back that last round, I said, Muhammad, there's nothing there. You can't fire. So I don't want to see you take a licking in there for no reason. And um, that's when I got up and I told the referee, no more. In the meantime, Drew Brown, Brundini, fought you, didn't he? Well, no, he met well. He grabbed my sweater. One more round, one more round. But there's always one round too many, and I don't want one more round where... 
my, any fighter of mine is, is uh, in the corner, and, and Muhammad is my fighter. All the years, how do you feel seeing him wind up this way? All the years are dynamite. I saw him on his feet. That's what made me feel good. Uh, he got licked. He lost to a champion. No disgrace. What do you think of Holmes? Good fighter. I say the best man out there, 35 and 0. At no time during, a, during any time when we were talking about the fight did I say anything derogatory about a champion. How can you say anything derogatory about a champion? He is the champion. Did you really believe that at this stage, after all these years, Ali could come back and beat a fighter like Holmes? If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't have said it. I believed it. I felt in my heart Muhammad could do the number and beat Larry Holmes. But you can't lick nobody if you don't fire back. Do you think Ali's position in boxing history will be tarnished by this? I don't think so. I think Muhammad Ali is a legend. He's an era. He's been a heck of a good time for me to be with such a great man. Thank you. You're looking at a man who just proved himself all over again, and yet is a terribly dejected man. Larry, I'd like you to explain why you've been crying sitting here with your wife. I love my wife. You know, so I really respect a whole lot, really respect Ali a whole lot. It hurt you to punish him that way, didn't it? I felt that I had control every round, and I was doing exactly what I wanted to do. And the man just showed a lot of determination that he's one hell of an athlete, and he can take a hell of a lot. And I don't care what anybody say, but I feel that he fought the one of the baddest heavyweight in the world today, and you cannot take credit from him. Are you sorry now that you had to take this fight once and for all to establish yourself, to get the monkey, as you said, off your back, to see that end come to him? No, I'm not sorry that I took this fight. I'm just sorry that people didn't give me the just do that I think I probably deserve. And I'm still sure that today people are still not going to give me my just do. But we don't care about that. We keep doing what we have to do. And we keep winning. And uh, God bless Ali, and I hope him many, many years of happiness. And I feel the same way about myself. So now you've got a record number of consecutive title knockouts. This one being a TKO. My congratulations to you. And I don't see anybody left to fight you that you can have any incentive against. Do you? Yes, Howard. One guy that I would like to fight. Yeah. That's the way it was, ladies and gentlemen. October 2nd past 1980. We are live in the studio now with Larry Holmes to my right, the WBC heavyweight champion, Muhammad Ali to my left. First question, Larry. Do you feel you've gotten the monkey off your back? Do you still feel cheated? No, I don't feel cheated, Howard, but I still feel that the monkey will be on my back because uh, that's the way it is in this game. You cannot satisfy everybody, so who cares? I just want to be able to satisfy me and my family. Controversy surrounded the fight in view of the aftermath of the events. Do you feel that the victory was tarnished by A, the drug controversy, B, the urinalysis controversy? No, I don't think the, uh, winning the fight was tarnished because uh, I fought a great man that night. I felt that uh, pills didn't have anything to do with the way this man was fighting. It was all Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes had something to do uh, the way he was fighting. Uh, every time he wanted to get off, I was there first. Uh, but not taking anything from Muhammad, I think he's a great athlete, he's a great human being. And I always think he would be a great fighter, a great person. But uh, I don't see that... Uh, this man is capable of fighting me anymore. All right. Now, you folks know that after the fight, Muhammad Ali went to the UCLA Medical Center, and it was there disclosed that he had been taking a drug known as Thyrolar, and that was for the treatment, presumably, of a hypothyroid condition. Do you feel that the taking of those drugs nullified you that night? Well, I would, uh, first of all, I want to say, Larry Holmes is great. He's much better than I ever thought. When he was my sparring partner, he wasn't near that good. I have that image in my mind. He was a great fighter, but I knew I could have done better. He's the true champion. I advise all my followers until I get him back. He is the man. And I want people to say, all my followers, he's the man. But 
I know it wasn't right. I, if you saw the thing close, I didn't perspire. I was a little too weak. I took punches. And they stopped it because I was too tired to really too tired to continue. I'm not making excuses. I never do. But that, that night, I wasn't right. And I think that um, is a great man because he says I can get another shot if I prove myself by taking on top contender. And I think I looked so bad that night. I don't deserve a shot right at him. I'm no champion. I think I should come back and knock out somebody and I'll show that I'm still who I am, the greatest of all times, and prove it. Hi. He remained determined to fight again. What I'd like to get to now is that drug controversy. A few weeks back, your personal physician, Dr. Williams, was on our late night news show, Nightline. Ted Koppel asked him why he prescribed Thyrolaw for you to take before the fight. Here's Dr. Williams. About two years ago, while in New Orleans before the Sphinx fight, I discovered uh, that uh, Dr. Ali was suffering from hypothyroidism, and this was confirmed by uh, laboratory examinations. And his uh, appearance in the following months confirmed my impression that he was suffering from myxedema. Uh, what is that in layman's terms? Well, the hypothyroidism to an extent where there is the swollen appearance of the face which simulated that uh, caused by kidney trouble and a swollen appearance of the arms and legs and the abdomen. Uh, therefore, I treated the condition in order to bring him to a normal state of metab metabolism. Now, Dr. Williams, forgive me, I'm a layman both in terms of medicine and in terms of sports, but it seems to me that if Muhammad Ali was suffering from that kind of a condition, he shouldn't be in the ring at all. Well, I, I had, uh, I went to uh, Las Vegas during the third week prior to the bout. And during, prior to that time, he had been approved by the Mayo Clinic and also approved by uh, the boxing commissioner's doctor, Dr. Romano, in Las Vegas. And therefore, uh, it was my duty, I felt, to see that his water balance, his salt balance, and his uh, uh, general condition were such as to provide him with maximum endurance and performance for the fight. Well, as to water balance, which Dr. Williams just mentioned, Muhammad has said, I didn't sweat. And he has said he was dehydrated. Now, you watched the fight. Did you see Muhammad sweat? I did more than watch the fight, Howard. I was in the fight. And uh, when I hit him with a punch, I could see water jumping off of him. And watching the fight now, you cannot see him really perspire that much. But by me knowing uh, Muhammad and knowing myself, uh, I perspire a great deal when I'm fighting. Uh, he didn't perspire as much, but he was perspiring. Okay. Now there was another controversy, ladies and gentlemen. It involved the urina urinalysis that habitually takes place after a fight. In Muhammad's case, there was the discovery of drugs. In point of fact, the urinalysis didn't occur till some three hours, or the specimen wasn't taken, after the fight had ended. In this regard, earlier today, I talked with the chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Mr. Sid Rogish, a gentleman of some considerable experience in boxing. Here was my conversation with him. Well, we'll have that conversation in a second. I want to explain further that what was found in the urinalysis was essentially an antidepressant drug and what in effect was a tranquilizer or painkiller. And the commission had intended involuntarily to render Ali retired. They did not do so. Instead, they received legal advice from the state attorney general. The conversation explains. Sig, since it's the avowed intent of your commission to place Ali into involuntary retirement, why the forthcoming hearing where you've given him 30 days notice to well, respond? Howard, he's entitled to his day in court as any, anyone would be in a situation like this. And we should hear the facts and then make our final determination. In other words, due process of law. Yes, sir. 
You don't want a repeat of what was done in 1967. I just want Muhammad Ali to know uh, and his people to know that we're going to give them every opportunity to present their case. Do you think a question of drugs is involved here? No, I don't believe so. I, I think it's more a question of what's best for his health and his safety and the integrity of the sport of boxing. All right, if you don't think drugs are involved, and we'll deal separately in this show with the question of the thyroid treatments, let's deal now with what you have jurisdiction over, the urinalysis after the fight. Dr. Wurgis took the specimen. That was several hours after the fight. In the interim, according to Dr. Williams, Ali's physician, he had given Ali A, a an antidepressant, and B, in effect, a tranquilizer to mm -hmm. settle the fighter down. He said he thought Dr. Wurgis had already taken the specimen of urine. Do you take Dr. Williams' word for I it? I do, I do. I think that he had nothing to gain by telling us otherwise. He's a professional doctor, and I just don't believe he would jeopardize himself uh, uh, in light of the Nevada State Athletic Commission or anyone else in a manner like that. Sig, if in the course of your hearing you determine that Ali, in your opinion, based upon all the facts and evidence, should be involuntarily retired in your state, is it your hope that the commissions of other states will follow suit? I would hope so. I, I don't think there's any difference uh, in a man's uh, safety in one state as opposed to another, and I would hope that for the integrity of boxing that uh, others would follow suit and give us the support that we need. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So that was the chairman, Mohammed, of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The intent, clearly, if the evidence adduced points to it, to involuntarily retire you, at least in the state of Nevada. But this time, you'll get a hearing. A speech like adjustment. I don't like to say this, I say this out. Because even he or anybody come to work one day and they have laryngitis or they're not right, I don't think it's right to take his livelihood because he had a bad day. Uh, they were supposed to check my urine after the fight. They waited for me to go back to the hotel. Three or four hours went by. Doctor gave me some type of anesthetic from a pain. Then they let me urinate into a cup after I'd taken the, uh, the uh, anesthetic. Then they found it. They should be checking me out immediately after the fight. I went with me. Why come four hours later? So naturally something was in, in my system. Well, they're not going to use that against you, as you just heard. Then yeah. They just feel that your boxing days have passed. Well, I didn't get knocked down. I didn't really get hurt. Uh, I can name fighters. I don't want to embarrass them who've been knocked out lately, laying out like that, falling for every fight like that. They keep fighting. I wasn't hurt or knocked out, even in their bad condition. I wasn't really beat up bad. They stopped because I was too tired and wasn't right. So why, why deny me a life because I had a bad night? Why are you so determined to continue fighting? Because You've I, been a hero to many people yes, in this country. I don't want to be no fool and go out on my stool. <laughs> <laughs> you said Holmes will be mine in nine. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> You're also crazy. You realize that, don't you? It takes one to know. <laughs> but as MacArthur says, I shall return. Holmes is just man. He says, let Ali prove these qualified. Well, is there another fight in the mill? We're now? working on a couple of top contenders. I want to come back. I did four rounds at Mike Reed's farm partner the other day in Kentucky. Danced and moved and was beautiful. You heard mm -hmm. about it. Anyway, I'm going to take on, tell all of you now, I'm going to take on a top contender and knock him out. Show you I'm supreme. And then I shall come back. And let me shake your hand, Larry. Thank you very much. Who's You're next for you, Larry? You're the great If Ali hurry up and knock somebody out, he'll be next. Oh, but man. No we're not going to worry about that. I'm we're gonna, gonna, I'm good luck to you both. We're going to continue to go on. Thank you both for coming right. by. You're two fine gentlemen. <laughs> really are. And good friends, He's too. He's bad. <laughs> All right. Call you both He's champion. the champ of the world. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Holmes against Ali, yeah. you saw it. And we end on a usually familiar note as Ali seeks to reprove himself all over again. <laughs> Under any circumstances, a reminder, Jim Watt won on a technical knockout in the 12th round over challenger Sean O'Grady over in Glasgow, Scotland. All the judges' cards at the time the fight was terminated favored Jim Watt. In the meantime, too, remember, tomorrow, 12 o'clock, New York time, 
Beginning first game of a doubleheader over most of these ABC stations, NCAA college football. It'll be fourth-ranked Georgia. Thank you, Larry. Very much. <laughs> and you'll see two of the great running backs of the country, Herschel Walker of Georgia against George Rogers of South Carolina. Then regional games. Of Muhammad Ali. Think in terms of bridges burned. Think of seasons that must end See the rivers rise and fall They will rise and fall again Everything must die again Like an ocean to a shore Like a river to Stream. Like a river to a stream It's the famous final scene tried to make it work Did you really think it could How you tried to make it last Did you really think it would Like a guest who stayed too As the light fades from the screen From the famous final scene I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fat, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. <laughs> 